Today, snow chances grew on the computer models, and there's a growing consensus that the pattern moving forward is going to feature a scene just like outside of my faux window out here. But boy, it could sure be a nice wintry scene moving forward, and we need to talk about it here, folks. Let me know where in the world you're watching from right now. Would you like to see snow? Well, today's model, especially the GFS, is your friend, but how realistic is it? Showing boom goes the models here with a classic Miller-type low-pressure system track bringing in some huge snows to the Carolinas up through the mid-Atlantic. But how far offshore it is, does the northern stream, uh, jet stream uh, phase with the southern stream, or do we see things look a little bit different, folks? In this video, I'm going to break that down and let you know what models I'm leaning toward and what the realistic shot for snow would be. If you will, please let me know where in the comments section you are watching from. Thank you guys so much. So, folks, there's so much information out there these days. You can get snow models just about anywhere, and I get 10, 15 messages in my message box on Facebook before I can even post a model sometimes. So, my goal is always to be transparent with what the models are showing. I always do it in a way that's responsible. Hey, here's what the GFS said today. Here's what the Euro said today. But here's what I believe. Okay, that's what a meteorologist is for. Uh, what I do see here is the chance for strong to severe storms tonight through tomorrow. We're going to be watching that closely. Then comes the pronounced dip in the jet stream. That is uh, certain. And it looks like it has some staying power. Not just the first one, the 15th through the 20th, but the 18th through the 22nd. Looks to be very cold as well before we start to get a little zonal or uh, normal, so to speak. This does bring in a risk for some severe weather. We've got a level two risk back through Alabama into Georgia. A level one risk across the Carolinas, meaning the storms that roll through, may pack a punch. The tornado threat mainly looks Atlanta or Athens south and westbound. That could include Montgomery, Alabama. We'll be watching that very closely. Uh, by and large, one of the bigger threats here is the level three high risk for flooding that has been issued back through Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, the green would be level one, level two, and then level three, kind of like a stoplight there. Uh, there has been a few water rescues back through Alabama. Additional rainfall totals look to still be quite high uh, going into the overnight hours and through tomorrow. So we need to look out for the potential that there could be an additional two, maybe three inches in Birmingham. That could stream up through North Georgia, Southwest Mountains, North Carolina. Generally speaking, these are drought stricken areas. We just don't need all the rain at once like this. South of I-85 is where we're going to get some lower totals. Let me show you the new uh, precipitation map as far as where this pans out and how it plays out. So here we go with the rain tonight. A lot of that shifts into western North Carolina and continues to be heavy at times into tomorrow morning. By 1 o'clock, there's a line that's forming back through Georgia. That begins to move east into the upstate of South Carolina and then into the evening hours, that rain and possibly even some thunder rolls through. That could be in time for the Carolina Panthers-Rams playoff game in Charlotte. We'll have to watch that. A couple of things we're watching here. Will there be enough cape or storm energy with this? I think there's plenty of it down toward Louisiana where there's been some tornado warnings as well as Mississippi. Alabama has that thread, but you see here the storm field doesn't quite make it too far to the north. Energy is going to the north, the warmth stays to the south, but there certainly could be some feisty storms out of that. As far as tracks are concerned, they've been cons confirmed uh, as far as rotating thunderstorms back toward the south and west. Could some of those get into Georgia? Possibly. Again, Athens, Georgia, uh, Atlanta, westbound. Couple of spinning thunderstorms here that we'll have to watch, but overall the tornado threat looks to be on the lower side in the Carolinas. So not zero, but something we'll watch. There could certainly be some thunder and lightning out of this activity as it rolls through. Certainly back through Alabama and Georgia in the upstate of South Carolina could even get it. And then for Charlotte, this is 6 p.m. That's as we're probably second quarter halftime or so. Could be some lightning in and around Charlotte, which we'll have to watch very closely. All right. Many of you jumped on here for snow. Let's talk snow. Uh, let's first look at the European model. I'll go as far as it'll go, which is the 18Z. Got a quick hit of some snow. That's as the colder air moves in. That's for the Midwest through the Northeast. That pushes out, and here we go into the 15th. This is a pronounced dip in the jet stream, which is a clipper type system. We're getting colder again by Thursday, Friday. But look at the low. It's way out here. There is zero phasing. So the Southern stream low forms way far out. There's no phasing with the northern stream, so it does its thing and kicks out to sea. That's what the 18Z European model run shows. Let's look at the 12Z model run. It's a little bit more interesting here, uh, and when you look closer at it, as we zoom this in, here's the 15th. You got some mountain snow coming up. 
that's going to move on through right there. But look how much closer that coastal low is. It's a little bit closer right there. And because a secondary one tries to form 1003 right there off the Carolina coast, it wraps in a little bit of moisture for central North Carolina. Now, does that look likely in Raleigh, Chapel Hill, Winston-Salem, Greensboro? You'd have a chance, but it's not high. Um, upstate South Carolina, maybe, but that one's probably not our chance. It certainly stays very active. Several dips in the jet stream coming on through. You see that there, another one coming through with more snow being possible for western North Carolina. So there's system number two or three, and that is a big dip in the jet stream. We need to talk about temperatures here with this as well. I mean, the 12Z European just really cools us down because it has that big piece of energy diving in. These are temperatures, not apparent temperatures. Watch this. Going toward the middle of the month, we get cold, but it gets very cold thereafter. Look at this. Toward the 20th, we got 12, 13, 14 degrees going deeper in the forecast here. I mean, this is some serious chill coming on in and would need to be monitored during this time frame as well. So Europeans on to something here. Uh, how cold does it get on the 19th, 20th? It's pretty dang cold. Uh, but does the snow and, and do these storms phase together? Well, the GFS had a really shocking run, and it's been doing that. I mean, this is probably the third or fourth run that has shown some sort of, of wintry weather here for uh, Western North Carolina, really North Carolina as a whole, but it phases together. It has the northern branch coming in and the southern branch phasing with it so that it sends back in the moisture in top of that cold air versus pushing it out to sea. So that would be an interesting model, but it also has another system coming in right behind it, a one-two punch here. That would be the 18th, 19th, and it moves on out. So it's got two snows on the GFS run, one there and one there. Certainly not unheard of for us to get that. Then it would send us in with some activity. Let's just back it up for a second. Let's look at all the runs that we have. Here's the 6Z run of the GFS model. As we map that out, cold air comes in the 15th. We know that. It's got a little southern low right there. Does it send in some snow showers or flurries to the upstate of South Carolina? Maybe. Charlotte? Maybe. Raleigh? Okay, that's, a, that's now the third really almost every run has shown some sort of snow between the 15th and the 21st for North Carolina. Okay, so for those folks out there that are really playing it conservative, uh, you'll have TV meteorologists that do that, that, you know, there's one extreme, being irresponsible and just calling every model, hey, it's going to snow. Uh, and then there are others out there that are, um, I'm going to tell you when it's going to snow the second before it snows, because that's when I'm sure it's going to snow. You can't, you can't be too far extreme on either side, right? Okay, but teach their own. Uh, here we are, the 6Z run shows some snow as well, and then it has another system coming in here with a possible threat toward the 20th. So it keeps us active, and that's the 6Z run. Now, the latest midday run of the GFS took away the big snow on the 18th, 19th, uh, still has the same pattern recognized here. It's got cold air, big dip coming in. It's got some snow for western North Carolina. It's got some snow for Tennessee, north Alabama. Um, big vort-driven thing. Um, but it's big for North Carolina, not so big for the upstate. And then we get another one coming in here through the 22nd. That looks to be mainly a rainmaker. So GFS is saying it, but folks, the idea here is to recognize a pattern. The pattern is cold, mighty cold, according to the European. I mean, we are plenty cold here. Highs in the 30s and 40s with snow, it would bring it down. But you got to look for trends, and here's a trend. Again, I picked GSP out of this map. Yesterday, there were, there were seven to, no, two days ago, there were seven. Yesterday, there were 10 or 11. Today, there's at least 20 models uh, of the GFS or of the European that show snow in Charlotte. Let me pick GSP on here. Okay, GSP. Again, not all of them, but there's some pretty good consensus here. Uh, some of them are on the 16th, 17th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. While more like 10 to 20 of them show it over here toward the 18th, 19th. So a growing chance. And that's also reflected on this map, which I keep showing you um, right here. This is the European AI Ensemble. So 51 different varieties of the European model showing you when and if we get snow. It wants to paint the chance for snow in South Carolina, North Georgia, and in North Alabama being between the 18th and the 22nd, which is way out there in, in model land. But it does have, through Columbia even, a 10 to 20% chance 
along the I-85 corridor, this green, if you look at your map down here, would be a 30 to 40 percent chance. In the northern part of the upstate, a 40 to 50 percent chance. Once you get to the yellows, I believe, yep, once you get to the green turning to yellow, which is right here, is a greater than 50 percent chance of an inch of snow or more. That does include Nashville, Cookville, Knoxville, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, all of East Tennessee, up through the high country of North Carolina. For Charlotte, it's right there at about a 40% chance. So Raleigh-Durham, about a 40% chance. You get up toward the Virginia state line, more like a 50% chance. So right in here, that yellow line is a greater than 50% chance. Now, is it trending one way or the other? Here's the 12Z. Here's the two runs ago, three runs ago. So it's, it's been consistent, but this last run's a little more strong with the chances. It didn't really move farther south. It just shows the chances that we have are, are there. So again, it's worth watching. Is there a chance for snow? Absolutely. And does that happen? Oh, hit the wrong button. Let's go back to chroma key. There we go. There's my magical snow. I uh, just want to have a little fun with some themed background here for you. Folks, uh, if you like me and like to see uh, windows like this outside, um, you know, let me know. Uh, wouldn't certainly be out of this world. We're supposed to get snow in wintertime. In fact, we're supposed to get quite a bit of snow in the wintertime. Uh, Asheville averages about 9 to 10 inches per year. Uh, Greenville Spartanburg, about 5 and a half inches of snow. We're supposed to get at least one good one. Uh, we've just been in a snow drought four years in a row now of very little to no snow. So, I promise to keep you posted, folks. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I uh, hope that you uh, will let me know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions uh, about where you're watching from, what the models are showing, uh, please let me know. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on those notifications as I promise to keep you posted. And hey, uh, we're watching out for that strong to severe storms. I promise to keep you posted. If you're here on YouTube and don't follow me on Facebook going o over there, I'm also on TikTok, Instagram, all the, all the things. So follow me there and promise to keep you guys posted. Have a good day.